Okay, today I'm super excited because I have Blake Crosby with me today. So we are talking baseball today. So welcome, Blake. Thank you. And I told you that when we began, you know, you know, I'm a Dodgers fan, and uh, I uh, I appreciate you not wearing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I went with the generic Boba Fett baseball shirt. Uh, so for those of you who are confused, uh, but yeah. That's but your I'm, expansion team coming right, expansion okay. team, the Star Wars expansion <laughs> team. Yeah, so uh, Blake and I, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah many, many years. We, we used to be next door neighbors. Yep. And I was like, I really wasn't into baseball when I first became, we became neighbors. And uh, I mean, I was, I was like a lot of people. I'd I played baseball as a kid, you, you know, enjoyed it as a kid. And then, you know, one of my best friends, Chris Provost from Provost Park Pass, those of you who are watch uh, Disney YouTuber, uh, oh, yeah. massive baseball fan. He's been trying to get me into baseball for years and years. And then in our same neighborhood, Andre Ethier from the, the Dodgers yeah. lived in our neighborhood. So I was like, well, if Andre lives in our neighborhood, I got to be, I got to get back into the Dodgers, which was my childhood team. Yeah. And uh, he's a Padres fan. My, uh, Chris is a Padres fan. Mm -hmm. And... And then you moved in next door to me, and and I'm like, well, now I have a a, a baseball <laughs> scout living. Yeah, no choice. Anymore. No choice. And uh, and at the time, you were working for the Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. And now you're with the Pirates. Yep. And so baseball just sort of surrounded me, and I got back into it, and um, just have been a fan, you know, diehard fan. Mostly of the Dodgers. Even though I live in Arizona, I apologize to the Diamondbacks. I know you just lost the World Series. <laughs> hey, they were there. They were there. You made it, though. You made it there. Yeah. That's a big, big achievement. But I, I am also a Diamondbacks fan. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit about my history on baseball and why it's interesting to me. And so when I was thinking of cool and interesting people to bring on, I'm like, I got to have Blake on. Because <laughs> you have a very unique job. Like, I was thinking about this prior to having you come on and I'm like, there's not very many people that do what you do. Right. So tell us what you do. So my, my current job is, um, I'm a special assignment scout with the Pittsburgh pirates. So it's a little different than when you first met me with the yeah. blue Jays. I was, uh, I was primarily covering the MLB draft with the blue Jays. So, you know, traveling around the country, seeing the top players, the top one, 100, 150 players in the country, you know, prepping them, meeting with them, doing all the things that we do to get ready for the draft. Um, so now with this new job with the Pirates, I'm kind of a little bit more global. You know, I'm I'm all over the, the world, basically. You know, wow. like two weeks ago, I was in the Dominican Republic. You know, next week I might be at a college fall ball game. You know, I just got done covering the Arizona Fall League for a professional. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything with the Pirates. So it's been fun. It's kind of a, a fresh... Uh, fresh take for me, you know, to kind of do something new all the time and, um, working with good people. And it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's, it's fun to, you know, be all over the world watching baseball and seeing it from very different ranges where you're seeing, you know, young Latin American kids at 14, 15 years old to scouting the major leagues where they're, you know, the finished product. So it's, uh, it's fun. So in an organization like the pirates, no. Are there other people that do the same thing that you do? Or are you like the guy that does that? Yeah. So in, in our organization, that's I'm I'm the guy that does that that role. Okay. It's kind of a you know kind of a I guess you could sprinkle me a little bit all over right. each department. Yeah. Um. We have we have certain guys that are you know mostly based just in amateur scouting or mostly based in just pro scouting and right. mostly based in uh you know international scouting. So that's the fun part for me is I kind of get to be a little bit of, of everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I don't take it for granted that it's, it's a unique job. It's a, it's a fun job. And you know, I feel like I kind of get to touch all aspects of the Pittsburgh pirates operation. So that's super cool. And, uh, I'm going to ask this question delicately because I don't want it to sound like a negative thing, but when I think of, you know, the, the blue Jays yeah. versus the pirates, yeah. blue Jays feels like a much bigger, yeah. Organization. Yep. Um, they're one of Canada's premier teams, of course. So they're and there's in they're one of their biggest cities, you know, have you noticed the difference between the two organizations? Like, no, you know what? I, I think the biggest difference that, um, most pe the, the general public or fans see is they, they look up and they see, Oh, players salaries or right. you know, this team spends this amount of money or that amount of money or, you know, whatever it is. 
we're we probably with the Blue Jays and the Pirates, it's been a little bit of a difference, you know, from from that standpoint um, of the time that I was with the Blue Jays, the time with the Pirates. But those things flip flop all the time, kind of depending on where you're at in your competitive window. And this time of joining the Pirates, we were kind of in that we're kind of building it up a little bit, you know, and, you know, getting the farm system strong and, you know, getting guys to the big league level. And now we're hoping here the next couple of years to really start, you know, really start making some moves at the big league level and, you know, start winning. And um, so in that sense, I'm hoping that it's going to be very blue Jay like, you know, and, <laughs> right. you know, like it was, cause you know, we had some really good years there with, yeah. with Toronto. Yeah. Um, but, and the, but that's more from like the, the, the fan perspective or, you know, the outside looking in for me, there's not a lot of difference, you know, as far as, I mean, we're how we do things might be a little bit different, but at the end of the day, like I'm going to the ballpark, I'm meeting with the kids, I'm giving my recommendations to the people that I work for. Right. And you know, that's, so that all of it is kind of the same in, in a sense, you know, how we maybe break it down or how our, you know, computer systems work or analytics department works or however that is, that might be a little bit different. Um, but at the end of the day for me, I'm, I'm going in and watching baseball, scouting baseball, comparing them to players that I've seen in the past and saying who I think is going to be, a you know, the next star at the, at the big league level. Wow. So you mentioned analytics and of course, uh, probably like a lot of other people, as soon as I hear that, I think money, money ball, ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 like, uh, how, you know, I mean, that's based on a true story, yeah. right? But, and then of course, I, I imagine there's a bit of Hollywood in the movie that I saw, but um, how much does that play into the real world of what you do? Like that sort of thing, like. Yeah, no, it, it plays in a, in a, in a big chunk of it. Um, you know, I think that, I think that people have always used numbers and sure. statistics and I think what. what Baseball has always been yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. What, what I think Moneyball did is it really drew attention to um, kind of advanced statistics and advanced mm -hmm. ways of thinking, um, you know, and, and now from that movie, I mean, it's kind of just been a growth. It feels since then. And now there's, there's large analytic departments all over baseball. Oh, wow. Um, but you know, at least for myself, like I've always used numbers. I like, I love the analytics. I love the the aspect of matching what I'm seeing with my own eyes, you know, subjectively and trying to get objective data and see where those two meet in the middle. And I think that that's ultimately what we try to do, you know, from an organization standpoint is we have some guys that are, have field experience. Or we have guys that have scouting experience. We have guys that are like, man, I've never played baseball in my life, <laughs> but I can tell you all the numbers. Right. And you know, you collaborate and you get everybody in the room and really you're just trying to make the very best decision that you can. Cause ultimately it's, we want to say it's more than a guess, but you're trying to make a really educated guess on right. what these people and players are going to be. And so the more information that you have, the better, you know, decision that you're probably going to make. And so that's how I've always looked at, at analytics is we want all the information that we can possibly have. Why, why would you not want, Hey, something that's given us an indicator of, you know, this type of future success or this type of future decline. Um, and if we can match that with what our subjective eyes are telling us at the ballpark, it's just going to help us make better decisions. Yeah. So that made me think of when you're, you know, doing your job, mm -hmm. scouting, looking at you know, pr prospects, whatever, how far out in the future are you looking like when you're planning? Cause you're saying we have our current team now, mm -hmm. we know what, we know when contracts end, we know yep. when people, you know, players become free agents, et cetera, et cetera. How far out do you strategize? Because sometimes, like you said, your your organization might be looking at high school kids, um, you know, and, and eventually you're trying to get, you know, look at players to get to the majors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how far out is that planning? Is it, or is it more like who's hot now and wh where can they fill the need that we have now? Yeah, if, again, it kind of goes back to whichever department I'm in that day, uh, you know? So right. if, you know, like I was involved in our in our trade deadline, you know, and so for that week and a half that I'm in Pittsburgh, the full focus is on our current roster mm -hmm. and, and it's focused on, okay, who do we have that, you know, what we might need to, to trade off of our roster for, you know, what prospects. And that also depends on where you're at in your competitive window. So, you know, when we got to the trade this year, we were a little bit out of it. 
And so it was like, okay, we have some guys that are going to be impending free agents. And so, okay, we look at deals for them and what are some prospects that we can get back? The hope is that you're in a place where you get to the trade deadline and it's like, we need to add, we need to add and make for a, uh, a, a playoff push and a world series push. Um, so it really kind of depends on where you're at in your competitive window. When it comes to the amateur and the international stuff, that's really all we're just trying to collect as much possible talent as you can get. Hmm. Because not only are we trying to help hopefully develop future pirates, but you're also developing pieces that you might trade at some point for pieces that are going to help you on the big league level. So, you know, the more, the more better names, better players that we can give to our general manager in our front office of, Hey, we've got these chips and now we can trade them in for, you know, a, a big league first baseman or a big league pitcher or whatever it is. Um, so it really kind of depends on that day where I'm, where I'm at. Yeah. You know, cause when I'm in Latin America, the last thing I'm thinking about is, you know, <laughs> probably how this guy's going to affect like the 2032 <laughs> roster, you know, right. like, I'm like, Hey man, like this kid can, can really swing it. He's athletic. He's a great kid. Um, you know, we think he's going to get bigger, stronger. Like this is just a quality piece that we want to add to our organization. Like to say that anybody can go down there and be like, Oh yeah, 2031, this guy's going to be thir like, there's no way. So that brings up another question that I've always had about this process. Like, I think most people from watching movies or maybe some interviews like this with other scouts or things like that, they kind of get an understanding of it. But me, that's just sort of uh, never really dove into understanding it really well. I'm always curious, like, how do you discover talent? And, you know, obviously there might be some in, you know, some secrets that you have, you don't want to reveal. But, you know, well, I'm not my brother. Yeah, <laughs> His brother works for Marvel. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, but yeah, how, like, how do you, like when you say Latin America and you're some tiny town, like, mm -hmm. how do you, I mean, how do these people pop up on the radar? Yeah. And so that kind of goes back to when I first started in baseball, okay. because most of the time when you first get into scouting, um, usually the first job is what's called an area scout or an area supervisor, someone that's really, you know, just has a pulse on the local talent. Oh. So, you know, when I, when I first started with the blue Jays, you know, I was, I was an area scout and I did the four corners. So I had, you know, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona. Uh. So I would talk to all the high school coaches. I would go to, you know, the high school tryouts. I would go to, you know, any event where, you know, like that, a, a third party, you know, thing is putting on for, you know, Hey, we're going to have the top hundred kids in the four corners or the top 50 kids in Arizona. Uh, so we're going out there and seeing those kids. And it, a lot of it's word of mouth. You know, you talk to a really respected high school coach and he says, Hey, I got a sophomore, like keep an eye on him for the next couple of years here, you know? And yeah. so really that becomes kind of how you get your collection of names. Makes sense. Um, and then as they get older, they start to get a little bit more famous as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Cause then all of a sudden they're on national publications and then they're, you know, Oh, now they're ranked top 50 mm -hmm. by baseball America or perfect game or whatever it is. And so then they become kind of really well-known prospects. Gotcha. And that's where, as it gets closer to the draft, it's like, all right, now we're, we kind of hone in on the guys that we were on that the industry is on and, you know, try and make a, a really good decision. But that grassroots level of finding talent. It's, it's really fun because you really like, you can be creative and there's going to be a lot of times where, I mean, I, I had it in my career where it's like, man, I, I totally believe in this, this kid and everybody else looks at you like you're nuts, man. And, you know, yeah. like there's, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see it, you know, yeah. but then all of a sudden, you know, six years later, that guy's pitching the major leagues and you're like, man, I, I believed in that kid, you know, and, then, yeah. and, and that's it gotta be a cool feeling. Oh yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. And so, so that was kind of a while ago. So now, you know, in my current role, I'm probably more the third, fourth, you know, you know, in line. And there's been so much groundwork that's already been put in. Right. And now it's kind of almost supervising and making sure our checkpoints are hit. And right. we're, you know, we're making sure that we have all the information that we need to, to make good decisions because the majority of our decisions are, you know, pretty big financially. So you want to make sure not only are you investing in good players, but good people. Well, and then you get, like you said at the beginning, you get that I mean, your role is like, seems a little more fun because you get that variety yeah. of being able to kind of hop around and yeah. check out different things. And that's kind of cool. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we're in Arizona. 
maybe a question people have is, you know, how do you work for an organization that's on the other side of the country yeah. and live in Arizona? Now, people familiar with Arizona will know this is a baseball state. Yep. We have spring training here for half the league or leagues mm-hmm. or league, however you say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so talk a little bit about, you know, why, you know, why Arizona? Because I know you're not from here. You're originally from Southern California. Southern California. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you like, like about Arizona? And then talk about just baseball in Arizona in general. Yeah. So I grew up coming here a lot with my dad because my dad was a major league scout for, well, he played in, in the major leagues in the seventies and then he was a scout. And so growing so up, your dad's name, just for uh, those. Ed Crosby, Ed Crosby. <laughs> and, uh, so he played for the Cardinals, Reds and Indians in the seventies. And, uh, and then he was a scout for a few teams, um, for about 20 plus years. And so a lot of those years, like he would have to come out to the spring training and, you know, scout and, you know, so we were able to kind of tag along and, you know, kind of get a feel for what Arizona is. Yeah. Um, at the same time, like, I don't think it's any secret. This is a, a, a hotbed for baseball with all of the, the facilities out here with the Arizona Fall League. Yeah. Um, it's also a great place to live. It's a, you know, our, our family lives here. We, we love it here. Um, so it just kind of you put all of those things together and it just really made it a, a really easy decision of, you know, where to live for, for my job. It is unique, you know, and people go, how can you work for the Pirates or the Blue Jays when you live in Arizona? Well, every team has scouts all over the country. So yeah. like we have scouts in California, we have scouts in Mississippi, we have scouts in Arkansas, we have scouts in Arizona. You know, every every team has that. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the Diamondbacks probably have the most per capita em- employees, you know, because they're they're right here. Right. But, you know, every team has that all over the country. That makes sense. So, uh, yeah, and I love being here in Arizona because as a baseball fan, it's fun to just go to spring training. Yep. I love, for those of you who haven't ever been to spring training, I used to hear about it growing up a lot. And I always wondered, well, you know, why would you go watch people train? <laughs> right. Like, you know, I mean, if you were a, a fan and you wanted to see one of your star players, whatever, that kind of made sense. Yeah. Um, and I always heard about the intimacy of it. But then when you actually go, you're like, they're not kidding. Right. Like you're literally, especially if you're kind of watching, if you go like make a day of it and you kind of watch the players warm up, like they're just right there. It's like almost like, like your local park playing. Yeah. They're practicing and then they move into the stadium for the game, but the stadiums are more like a minor league stadium. Right. They're small and a lot cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, my, my brother, Brian, who, who we mentioned, he's got a tradition with his sons that they come out here every year and they've yeah. been doing it for years. Cause they're huge angel fans. I mean, we, we grew up in Southern California and yeah. he's, he's as big an angel fan as I know. And it's been a, a really cool tradition for him because like you said, I mean, you get to be so intimate with the players and so close up and get autographs and, you know, you really catch them when their guard is down and yeah. you know, they're, you know, it's not where, you know, they're going to get their work in, but they're also, you know, just trying to get, prepped and ready for the season and it's yeah. just you get to just see them in a real low key you know type of environment and it makes it really fun for the fans yeah you know i'm i'm sure that there's there's fans that come out and you know oh this guy he's going to be our our you know our number one or our number two or you know i'm sure there's diehards like that as well but i, I think you know for the majority of, of it it's you know fans really get to know the players they get to know, you know, who they are as people, they get autographs, you know, it's just a fun environment to be around. Um, it, you know, if you're, if you're a diehard type fan. Yeah. Yeah. I would even say for a casual baseball fan, yeah. oh, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Cause sure. you can go to multiple games in a week. Yeah. Uh, see variety of different teams. Yeah. Well, and what's funny is I actually, until this past year, I hadn't been to a spring training game in the full time that I lived here because I was out doing right. you know, college baseball <laughs> and high a school. busy season for yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, Oh, so you go to spring training all the time. It's like, like no, I'm working. I haven't been to one spring training game since I've been here. Like I'm usually in, you know, Arkansas or Tennessee yeah. or, you know, like, you know, and so if I get two days at home, the last thing my wife wants to hear is like, Hey, you, you know, you want to go catch the Mariners and Roy, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, no, it's uh, but it's fun. It's fun. Well, it's, it's interesting because even I had been thinking about inviting you to come on for a long time, but the whole time I'm like, well, no, this is prime season for you. And I'm like, okay, the world series over. So it's usually when he gets a little bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah. they called you like, you called me at a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I tell everybody this time of year, man, this is, yeah. uh, if you need anything, you need me to come mow right. your lawn or whatever. <laughs> I, I got a lot of time on my hands yeah, this time of year. Busy the rest of the um, year. Yeah. So good time of year. So you mentioned your dad, Yeah. but I mean, you, you're a baseball family. So talk about your family and baseball in general, besides your black, you know, the, the, what do you call the black sheep of the family, Brian? Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's a friend too. So we can tease him. Yes. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so my dad, um, he grew up in in Long Beach, California, and you know played at Long Beach Wilson, Long Beach Community College, uh, was drafted by the Cardinals, um, played about six and a half years in the major leagues. Um, he got done right around I want to say like nineteen seventy seven ish, um, and that was right around when my oldest brother Brian was born, and uh, you know I think he wanted to just got to be a dad at that point right. and. You know, he did a couple of, you know, different jobs um, prior to what was going to be his next endeavor. And that's he got into scouting with the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, and and like anything in baseball, it's a, a lot of it is kind of who, you know, because there's guys sure. that, you know, there's guys that have Yale backgrounds. There's guys that have one year of junior college backgrounds. There's guys that just have high school. You know, it's all, there's so many different backgrounds. And so he knew a couple people and, you know got into the game and started working for the Orioles. Um, and then over about 20 plus years, you know, he had a sc nice scouting career. He ended up signing uh, probably his, his highlight is he signed Jason Giambi who, nice. who played, played for the Oakland A's and was an MVP. And so that was, you know, kind of his, his, yeah. his signing uh, highlight. And then, like I said, me and my two older brothers, you know, Brian, uh, you know, he got into kind of the artistic world yeah. and then my middle brother, Bobby, who in the baseball world is probably the most well-known of, of all of us is, you know, he went to Long Beach state and was drafted by the Oakland A's and was a rookie of the year in 2004. Um, and so, um, you know, so like I said, for, for myself, I mean, I got to see my, my dad do it, my brothers do it. Um, you know, but at the same time, and this kind of goes back to Brian, is my dad was always the kind of person that never pushed anything on us. Yeah. Like he never, never once did I ever hear my dad say like, oh, you need to play baseball or you need to, you need to be involved with baseball. Like he always told us, whatever you're going to do, give it a hundred percent. And he goes, that's, that's all I care. Yeah. And, you know, Brian, like I said, Brian got into the art world yeah. and my dad is, always been supportive. I got into the baseball world. My dad's supportive. Bobby was in the baseball world. My dad's support, you know, and so, um, we were able to really kind of do whatever we want to do. And I, I've tried to kind of, you know, use that in my own life. Like I have my, my son who he is just all basketball, yeah, yes. all basketball. <laughs> Since all birth. Of, oh yeah. Like that's, I mean, I mean, I, I've never seen a, a nine year old kid that will sit there and break down the NBA draft. Yeah. Like he just, he, he does it like, and he so loves true. it. Yeah. And it's, it's fun for me because you know what, like that's his love. Like he gets yeah. to do whatever he wants to do, whatever he loves to do. And I get to support him just like my dad supported me. So oh. But yeah, so we've got a. We sort of skipped over your baseball. Career. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know. Try to be humble. I know. Um, so yeah, so I uh, so I played uh, college ball. I I started at uh, BYU, um, and then now it doesn't look as as you know big because I have the transfer portal in college sports. So now I can just say like I was the transfer portal before the transfer portal. You know, but no, um, I ended up at Sacramento State. Um, and then I ended up getting, uh, drafted by the Oakland A's and, and played a little bit of minor league ball. Um, I was a little bit older at the time. I had, uh, I had served a, a two year church mission prior to, to going to BYU. And as I know now in baseball, a lot of, a lot of, you know, value is placed on how old you are and, yeah. you know, and so when I got drafted at about 24, almost 25 years old, my, my clock was Oh, about running out here pretty right. soon. And so, and we had actually had my, my daughter, uh, my wife, Kelsey and I, uh, had our daughter Ava. And so I also knew that I always really wanted to work in baseball. Um, you know, being in a front office, um, that had always been a dream of mine. Yeah. And so, um, through a couple of, you know, lucky circumstances, um, you know, I was able to, to work with the A's, the team that drafted me and, there were actually ended up being an opportunity to get right into scouting with the Blue Jays. 
and they were fully supportive and they said, Hey man, go take it. Like, we know this is something that you want to do. And so again, I going back to the area scout conversation. I started out as an area scout with the blue Jays and kind of kept going up the, the ladder, you know, from there. And so now this is what, this is year 13, 13 years, 13 wow. years of scouting. And you don't look old enough. I know. I, know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I feel old enough. Um, but, uh, you know, and so this was my first year with the pirates. And so it's, it's been a fun, fun career so far. Yeah. That's super cool. You probably have a lot of knowledge about baseball that the average person doesn't like to, it's just kind of normal because you grew up around it and right. you've been so involved in it. And one of the things that I'm always curious about is, um, especially kind of in the scouting side of things or in, you know, how an organization builds a team is, um, you know, what are, like, are there things that you just see that people just have a total misconception on or is, is it pretty like, like, I think, you know, my, my vision of what, what, a what the scouting side of things looks like is what you see in the movies, right? Which kind of aligns with what you said. There's a lot of travel involved. You kind of see, but the one question I have is this, you see this all the time in the movies. And I'm like, this can't be that real, can it? And it's like, I promise you, whatever you're going to say, it's not. So good. You, you show that you show the players are all getting, oh, the scouts are coming out today. Right. We're going. And like their whole career depends on this one game. And I'm like, that just doesn't seem right. Like they got to be watching these kids. Like everybody knows you're going to have a bad day, right? Yeah. No. So, so tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I think one of the first misconceptions is a lot of people will come up to me and be like, say, oh, are you still a recruiter for the, the Blue Jays or a recruiter for the, I was like, I'm not a recruiter. I'm not a, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, recruit. I don't set up a table and, you know, I, I'm not a recruiter. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's a totally different side, like where the college game, they go out in the homes and you're really trying to convince those kids. That's like, a different job. Yeah. To, yeah. Hey, you know, this is what your education is going to be. And this is what we can offer you as far as your future and things like that. Whereas, yeah, we're going to talk about the things that we're going to do to help those kids. But the majority of the kids want us, they want major league baseball. Right. So you're, you're not overly trying to convince a kid to come play major league baseball. Most of them want that. Um, we just hope that what we present to them, it, you know, it feels like, Hey, this is going to be a good opportunity for their career. Right. Um, but going back to, you know, your other question about, um, I don't know, that it's, it's hard. Like it's hard, it's hard to answer and say if there is a, um, a big different, I mean, like that situation yeah. where there's just, you know, there's one opportunity for the scout to see. Yeah. 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 yeah so, yeah. yeah. So, you know, from that standpoint, no, I mean, we're going to see these kids a ton. Like we're going to, we're going to see these kids get a ton of at bats, a ton of innings. And actually we really want to see them fail. We want mm -hmm. to see them have success, but we want to see them fail because the majority of the time in, in major league baseball and professional baseball, I mean, if you're a 300 hitter, you're going into the hall of fame, but you just failed seven out of 10 times, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, you know, so we're going to see people fail all the time. Yeah. And so we want to see how do they handle it? Do they become a different teammate? How do they react in the dugout? Do they take their at bats to, to their defense? Um, do they, you know, do they let it affect in, the, in their body language? Are, you know, are they only a good teammate when things are going right for them? You know, um, how do they respond not only that day, but how do they respond the next day? Are they out for early work? Are they out, you know, making the adjustments that they need to, if, if we see a, a flaw in a player and we say, man, like, I don't know if this guy ever uses the opposite field, like, okay, we check on him early in the year. And if we go back later on in the year and all of a sudden this guy's made a really quality adjustment where now he's keeping his shoulder in and he's driving the ball to right center, right field. It's like, man, like this guy has aptitude, like he can make his own adjustments. And so we want to see failure as well. Interesting. You yeah. know, just as much as we want to see success. Now, when they, when we sign them, we want to see success, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but ultimately there's going to be, there's ultimately going to be failure. Right. And so we, we want to make sure that we see that. And it makes so sense. yeah so the the movies where you know they they come out and they got one shot <laughs> no and you see this shot of all the scouts going yeah no nah. this guy sucks we're never gonna watch nah. him again <laughs> yeah no nah, no nah. uh you know I I think that was probably a little bit more prevalent like in the early days of scouting uh -huh. just because you know you had guys that were I mean teams had you know very small staff and guys were driving all over the country uh -huh. and there wasn't 
YouTube. There wasn't, right. you know, video. There wasn't all these different things that like can give you a bigger picture. And really like, it was like, Hey, the scouts coming in to see you today. And if you don't perform, it's probably going to be tough to get back on that scouts radar. Maybe, you know, maybe you didn't do well for the Cardinals, but the Yankees scout comes in, you know? So, yeah. um, so I think that was probably a prevalent, like a long time ago, but nowadays, no. So kind of not even related to that, but um, it made me think about something like when you're working for an organization, you work for, you know, a major league team. Um, how is that different than say being a fan of a team in the sense of, you know, uh, I think one thing that I've seen in, in other professional sports is there's actually a lot of, I would say camaraderie between opposing teams for people who are kind of doing the same thing. Like, do you, like when you're out and about, I'm sure you run into people that you know from other organizations yeah. and, and like, what is that like? Is it, is there, is there sort of a, Hey, you, you know, you're with a different organization, stay away from me, you know? Uh, <laughs> no. And again, I think probably a long, long time ago, it was probably a lot more like that okay. because you know a lot of it was more word of mouth and it was like oh you know because uh, you only had the newspaper or you only had the pay phone to go to right. now now generally you pretty much know who the prospects are going to mm -hmm. be you know occasionally yeah there's guys that were like oh man you know we're not we're on this guy a little bit higher than the other team is yeah but guys that work with other two guys or girls that work with other teams um I, I talk to them that I consider them coworkers and you're kind of a family in baseball, you know, you take care of each other and if you hear like, Oh, hey, you know what? This game's getting canceled or, you know, yeah, you let yeah. them know now at the same time, like, am I going to talk to them and say, Oh, we're, you know, we think we're going to take him in the second round. Well, no, because no, we, we want to get that player, <laughs> right? Right. Of but, course. but there's, there's definitely a, a camaraderie and a, you know, cohesion of, you know, people that work in the industry for sure. And the interesting thing from a fan perspective is, uh, and I've always found this a, an interesting social science sort of perspective when you look at sports teams and how that sort of, you know, we, we hear about politics, for mm -hmm. example, and how divided we are in our teams. And I'm like, well, that sort of rooted in, we're sort of taught that because we are like, you're literally this team, this is your school, that's your school. And we carry that on. And, and it, it's sometimes disappointing when you see fans who are like, you know, you're a Pirates fan. You're the worst kind of, kind of people in the world. And I'm thinking, well, even the players might be playing for the opposing team next season. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, right. like there's, I think you should take loyalty to a, to a point as a fan. Right. Um, but, but you got to realize, you know, we're all human beings and we're just, you know, and, and the interesting piece that I see is you get baseball fans, doesn't matter who they support. And let's say hockey fans, and now they're like, baseball's better, hockey's better. <laughs> now it doesn't matter what team you are, right. it's just baseball in general. And I'm like, so it's just kind of an interesting dynamic. And I, I, I think um, I, I have a friend who's a professional bull rider, and oh, wow. and it's interesting to see how even with their direct competitors, how supportive they are uh, of each other. And I, I didn't race professionally on motorcycles, but I raced with professionals yeah. and, and it was interesting to see how supportive and everybody is because like you said, you're in the same family, you're, yeah. in the, you're doing the same job. And I liked how you kind of said they're coworkers. And yeah. so just a note to you diehard fans who are trying to beat up the other fans, <laughs> just tone it down a little. Yeah. No, I, and you know, and, and like most things in life, unfortunately you probably see the, the love and the respect when, you know, something tragic happens, yeah. you know, when you see a, Good you know, point. another, you know, scout pass away and you just see the entire industry rally around mm. that team and, you know, his teammates and his coworkers and, you know, this, the scouting community is, a, it's a family, you know, yeah. like there's a scouts association, oh, wow. um, you know, where we take care of, you know, older scouts or scouts that are falling on hard times and things like that. So there's definitely a, a camaraderie and a community of, you know, all of us that kind of, you know, stick together and help each other out. And, you know, and I think major league baseball is like that in general, because I think we would do, obviously we'd do the same for a player or a, a person that works in player development or a person that works in the analytic or research and development part, yeah. you know, something tragic or something, you know, unfortunate happens, you rally around those people. So we're definitely all a baseball family. And, you know, really that extends to, college and high school, you know what I mean? Right. Cause we're yeah. all, we're all working for the same goal and that's to, 
to develop these kids and see them thrive in the major leagues. And, you know, we as pirates, we're just hoping we do it more than, you know, the other 29. Right. Teams, right. You know? <laughs> uh, and you, you hope you find that diamond in the rough, right? Yeah. Um, so kind of going back to that, you know, when you talk about, when we think about baseball, this, my perspective is, you know, the United States, Canada, Latin America, Japan, um, and beyond that, I'm like, are there any other places that are like hotspots for baseball development? Like to the point, like, I'm sure there's places in the world where you don't have local scouts. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you nailed it. I mean, the, the United States, the Dominican Republic, uh, Venezuela, and then, you know, we have, they're called Pacific Rim scouts. So, okay. you know, Japan, China, Korea, that's, I mean, when you really break it down, that's going to be the majority of, you know, where the players are coming from. Now there's, you know, there's, you know, you might get a couple Australian players or a couple players from Curacao or a couple players from, well, you know, Cuba's actually um, put out a lot of talent as oh, well yeah, and, and Mexico, you know, so, but I, I would say the majority is the United States, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, and then those Pacific Rim players. And why is that? Is it just, is it culture? Like, because people are driving it, you got, that's where the talent is, the coaches are, the, well, why is that? Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say, and probably somebody that could you know, do a, a history dive would probably give a better answer than I could on that. Um, I just know from from going over to those places, especially you know the Dominican. I mean, it is just it's ingrained in them from the time that they are are little kids. Like, I mean, you just you you drive around the streets, and it's just you see kids playing baseball everywhere. And it's like it doesn't matter if they're playing with a, a normal baseball, a stick, wh whatever it is. Like these, those kids are just playing baseball. And I think that we're probably losing a little bit of that in, in the United States. Cause yeah. now it's like, I mean, there's just, there's so many different sports, but as you go over there, I mean, it's, it's baseball. Just like baseball. they, they love baseball. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, like I said, I'm sure there's a, a very better historic answer, you know, to why that is, but those are, those are the hotbeds. So. But it kind of supports the idea that if you're passionate about something and you practice at it, you're, yeah. you're going to get talent. And then, you know, some people are going to just have more for who knows what reason. Right. Maybe it's DNA. <laughs> Maybe it's better the way they learn. Right. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I think of, you know, some kid in some random, you know, country that is not known for baseball, you know, Romania or something like mm -hmm. that. Maybe there's great, there's probably great players that have come out of there, but. Yeah. And, and Major League Baseball has worked really hard to try to make initiatives to get those players seen. Yeah. Like there's, there's teams that are, they're called like, you know, uh, they're on world teams and they, mm. you know, they come over to the United States or they come over to different countries and we get to see them play, and, uh, you know, and I know major league baseball's, you know, yeah. really tried to make initiatives all over the world to make wow. it a worldwide game. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very convinced that, you know, if you're a really good player and you have professional ability, like, you're going to get an opportunity in this day and age to be seen. That's cool. Now, you know, for us as a, as an organization, we're probably saying, well, most of our bang for our buck is going to be in, you right. know, the, you know, the places where it's just, you just have players everywhere. Yeah. Um, but no, but players come from, from all over the world. And, hmm. you know, like the, I know they've made, um, you know, the movies about, you know, the two players that, you know, the pirates signed a long time ago that came over from India and, you know, like there's just, Oh, that's right. You yeah. know, there's just, if you can play, I, yeah. somebody's going to find you. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Especially like you said, with all the technology yeah. and things that we have available. What are there, are there like, like what kind of advice do you offer people who are like, like they've got a young kid, like let's say a 10 year old. Yeah. Who's loves baseball, plays it all the time. And is like, I want to play in the major leagues. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you tell a parent? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, and I, I get asked that a lot, especially, you know, with my son being in youth sports and, yeah. you know, some of the, some of his teammates will play baseball. And, you know, the, the thing that I really try to stress, at least from the baseball side of thing is be an athlete. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I tell kids, go play football, go play basketball, go play soccer, go play baseball and develop those skills that are going to use your body all over the place, you know, and you're going to develop things, you know, where, Hey, yeah, baseball might end up being what you want to do, but you might like football better. You might like soccer better. And you want to make sure that that really is your passion because there is, there's a lot of avenues that you can go from a pure baseball standpoint. Like you're just, you're going to develop speed, agility, strength, you know, 
all, all those different things that come from playing other sports. So I always tell younger kids, man, play them all, play them all until, wow. until you have to get to that point where you have to be, you know, straight line ahead and just playing your one sport. Um, and a, a lot of that kind of depends on where you live in the country. You know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, areas where guys are playing three to four sports and, you know, they can right. pull that off. Whereas, you know, areas kind of where we live, I mean, it's become pretty narrow where it's like these kids play basketball year round or they play right. baseball year round or football year round. Um, so I, I'm, I always encourage kids, especially under the age of 10, play all sports and develop all those, all those physical attributes, because no matter what, eventually that's going to help you in baseball. If baseball ends up being your choice. And I just think prior to that age, like, I just think it's too early to decide like, oh, this is it. This is, you know what I mean? Because there's just, there's so many great things and so many great sports that you can play. I, I hope they end up wanting to play baseball. Right. But at that age, you know, I think it's, it's great to be exposed to, to all different sports and really find your love so that when you get to those mature ages of 11, 12, 13, 14, and now it's like, now it's go time. Now it's okay. I got to put the strength on right. and the speed on and transform my body. And, you know, maybe it's getting a, a personal trainer or a personal pitching coach or person, you know, all those different things. And if you get to that point at 12, 13 years old and you don't love that sport, it's, they're going to fall off the wayside anyway. So yeah, just making point. sure that you love the sport by that point. That's really good advice. I wouldn't have thought of that, but it makes sense when you say it. Yeah. Does it matter? How much does it matter in today's world uh, where you go to school, like, you know, high school, mm -hmm. where you go to college, like if you're trying to get into baseball, because obviously there are schools even here in Arizona that are well known for their baseball programs. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I would imagine that still matters to a degree. Yeah, no, it, it definitely matters. Um, I think it matters more for your own development. Oh, you know, okay. if, if you're going to a school that has really good high school baseball coaches, well, then you're, you're going to, I mean, it's like anything. If you're around good teachers, you're probably going to become a better student. If you're around better coaches, you're going to become a better player. You know, if you're around a school that has better resources and better facilities and better opportunities for you to get better, like all those things are going to, yeah. you know, get your arrow going in the right direction. Um, kids can come from all, anywhere like they really can't i mean i, I mentioned dominican and a yeah. lot of those kids are coming yeah. from so there's there's not a one size fits yeah. all you know but ultimately like if you have the choice of saying like man my my son or daughter can really develop under this coach who runs a top-notch program and has top-notch facilities well yeah you're probably setting your kid up for better success in that standpoint but at the same time some people don't have those resources right. some people don't have you know they can't you know, drive their kid 30 minutes to go to that school. And if you're still a good player, you're still going to be found. So yeah. yeah, like I said, I, I, I think that there's definitely a benefit to, and that's why you, you see those top notch schools and those top notch programs all over the country, because yeah, I mean, if you can put yourself in that position, it's it can't be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but it's not a, uh, it's not a prerequisite for, Oh man, if, if he doesn't go to this high school, we're not going to sign him or we're not going to talk to him. Like nothing like that. Uh, and that comes from, I, I have a friend who's a diehard baseball fan. He's, mm -hmm. you know, about my age and he made a comment once jokingly, but he's like, I kind of wish I would have grown up in the Dominican because I'd have been a better baseball player. And I'm like, <laughs> nothing against the Dominican Republic, but you know, I mean, it, it is a, you know, an impoverished country. Right. And, um, and it, it is amazing how many good baseball players have come out of places like that or Cuba or some of these. Yeah. And so, uh, I think, you know, it was nice to hear you say, you know, if you're, if you have talent, you're going to get noticed. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've signed players where, you know, you go to their high school field and the grass is two feet tall and the coach, you know, he, he teaches biology and doesn't really care about baseball, rolls out the balls and is like, all right, guys, go get them. You know, but if it's like, if we see the player and he's athletic and we think he's got potential, we're going to sign and we're not going to say, well, oh no, he didn't play for you know, this academy and that's all. No, absolutely not. So, but again, if you get that type of player and you put them in a facility with, you know, great resources and with a great coach and that's going to develop them, probably going to be better off for that player. So how hard is it to see talent? Like, I think the average person, you know, we, it's, it's crazy. I think, I think 
all of us love that discovery, mm -hmm. which is why shows like America's Got Talent or some of the singing competitions, you know, that everybody loves being part of that discovery process. Yeah. And, you know, we watch like American Idol and they'll play the people who think they can sing, but they're, they're like tone deaf. They really can't sing right, right. and they don't even know it. They're not aware. And everybody around them tell, Oh, you're such a good singer. Um, I, that has to apply in sports as well. Mm -hmm. Like, but is it, painfully i mean obviously there's the exceptions who are just like well they hit a home run every time they swing <laughs> yeah. but i'm talking about just your general player who's above average yep is it do they stand out to someone like you who's been trained been doing this for years is it pretty obvious to you or is it, sometimes it's like a bit of a challenge like yeah so we you know so that that's a big misconception that a lot of people think is like oh this kid hits you know, 20 home runs and he should be the best player. Well, just because he's the best player at 14 years old and he's bigger and stronger than everybody else doesn't mean that that's going to translate uh, to the next level. So from a scouting sense, we have what's called a, a five tools. So we say there's a hit tool, there's a raw power, like how far a person can hit a ball, your speed, your arm strength and your defense. Uh, and so we grade those five tools and normally the, the tools that are going to be able to stand out right from the get go is your raw power, your speed and your arm strength. Cause those are things you right. can measure, you know, you can see exit velocity, you can see velocity off the mound. You can see, you know, if we time them in a 60 yard dash, so you're going to get those three raw traits. And then once you get to, to know those, then that hit tool of like, how good of a, an eye does he have? Mm -hmm. How how well does he control the strike zone? You know, how well does he react to a curveball? Then you start to measure that out. And then from that defensive grade, it's like, okay, how does he use that speed and that arm strength to move around the infield or move around the outfield? Does he have good footwork? Does he have good agility? And so we'll grade those out. We have, it's called a 20 to 80 scale. Mm -hmm. So an 80 is your Mike Trout's of the world. Right. And your 20 is... Uh, whoever you know hope you have a backup you know <laughs> yeah yes you know and so and so 50 that's an average major leaguer like so yeah so when we're grading you know kids out if you know we'll put a present tool and a, a future tool so most kids are going to be somewhere in the 20 to 40 range you know but then we're going to say okay this kid has 40 raw power but you know what? Like, look at his dad. Look at, you know, just the size of his shoulders, his neck. This kid's going to get bigger, stronger. So, okay, I'm going to put a 40 raw power, but I'm going to put a 60 future on this kid ah. because, you know, and so, so really at the end of the day, that's what our scouting reports is, is what do we think their overall future potential is going to be? And that, so that's how, and it's, and it's the same thing from a pitching standpoint. It's like, okay, we can, we can see how hard they throw and everybody goes, oh, this kid throws so hard. He's the best. Well, no, not necessarily because you're going to get some kids that can really pitch and they can, they can go to any quadrant of the zone. And, but at that time, maybe they're a skinny six, three, 175, hmm. but okay. So we, then we say to ourselves, all right, we can put 20, 25 pounds on this kid. So now we've got a guy that can really control the fastball and we're going to put velocity on him and we can, you know, so it, uh, it's, it, yeah. you know, so it's, and not everything. You put a little bit of an investment in yes, them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so some, you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, this kid, he throws harder than everybody else. Okay. And that's great. Like it's, it's a nice tool to have, but can he throw strikes? Can he, mm. can he throw a breaking ball? Can he control the change up? How athletic is he? Can he make adjustments when things don't go right? Like, you know, so there's just, there's so many different things that, that come into play. Um, and again, our, our line of work is always looking at what we think they're going to eventually be. Hmm. You know, when they're at their peak, do we think that this player is going to be here? So you might have a kid who, yeah, he's the greatest high school player ever. Okay. Like that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be the best major league player ever. Right. The kid that might be second or third on that list, you know, we might say like, Hey man, like we put some strength, and some quickness on this kid and, you know, just genetics in general, this kid's going to fly right past that. Hmm. That's makes sense. And it's inter interesting. So when you're talking about, you know, these skills and everything's like that, baseball fans will know, 
your value is a lot higher if you can switch it, especially pitch. If you can pitch left and right, that just seems to be like, well, now you've beca- you've just created a challenge that the opposing right. team really, because you know we've seen it where they'll say, oh, we got our really strong right-handed batter coming out, and they're gonna they'll swap out a pitcher right. just to make it harder for that batter. Uh, so, are there skill? Are those? I mean, those seem like valuable skills. Yeah. Would that those that type of skill is that worth developing? Like somebody to to be able to switch hit or pitch? Yeah. No, definitely. And. Um, you're actually seeing it a little bit more now with some of these kids now that are, are, are switch pitching, which to me is just mind blowing, you know, unfathomable. <laughs> well, you don't want to see me try and throw right. left handed, <laughs> you know? Um, but no, I, I think it's like anything is the more unique that you can make yourself. And you know, the, the more that you can differentiate yourself from other players, that's going to create value. So, I mean, I think, and I think that applies to anything in life. It's like, man, if, if this kid can, can switch it, and he can run. It's like, well, how many kids do we have in our organization that can switch it and run? All right. Well, now he's put into a very small, you know, mm. small group. Okay. Well, now he can switch it, run, and play great defense. All right. Now he goes into another smaller group. So it's just the more that you can differentiate yourself, the more value you're going to have. And in turn, from our world, it's probably the more you're going to get paid from a signing bonus standpoint. Right. But you know, if like I said, and that's why I, you know, some parents will, or people will be like, oh, well, this kid, it's so many home runs. Okay. Well, all right. Then great. He gets put into this bucket of kids that hit a lot of home runs. Right. There's thousands, thousands. thousands. Yeah. Okay. Now how many kids can hit home runs and play really good defense? Okay. There's, you know, a little Fewer. bit of, yeah. And you know, it's just the more that you can differentiate yourself, but you know, the, the general baseball fan, they love home runs and they love fastball velocity. Right. So everybody, you know, that's <laughs> where the focus it, is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this kid throws 95. It's like, awesome. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's great. Like, it, you know, a lot of kids can't do that, yeah. but it now what, what can he do next? Can he throw a breaking ball? Can he command the fastball? Can he yeah. command the change? You know, all those different things. So it's really just trying to differentiate yourself. Wow. Okay. That's seems like solid. I mean, I was going to say, it's obviously solid advice. Seems like common sense when you say it. Right. <laughs> How does someone who's like loves baseball, like you, like take the path that you did where, or maybe they don't even take the path you did because you were a player and then got into the, the other side of baseball mm-hmm. and working for an organization. Um, I know people who are like, oh, I would love to work for a major league baseball team. And, and I'll say doing what? They're like anything. I would right. love to do anything. Um, and some of these organizations, like you said, are fairly large. They've got a lot of people who very variety of backgrounds, never played but baseball. What would be your advice to someone who wanted to work for a major league team? Yeah, I, I really think that it comes down to trying to find what specifically you really want to get into. So like you, like you said, like people will come up to me and be like, oh, I want to work in baseball. And I'll say, do you want to work in concessions? Do you want to work in ticketing? Do you like you want to work? You know, there's so many. You know, right. It's like people that say like, "Oh, I want to work in in movies." Well, there's thousand yeah, yeah. jobs. Yeah. You know, so like, are you talking about men? You want to be involved in you know the front office and scouting or you know that sort of thing? And so I always tell people to kind of do your research on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, are you are you wanting to be involved in team decisions like? you know, drafting and signing and scouting and that sort of, and that's more baseball operations. Right. Or do you want to be just around the ballpark and man, you, you want to be involved in game day activities and concessions and ticketing and all those different things. So that's the first thing that I, I tell people. Um, I think, you know, coming back to the, the money ball movie, I think what money ball really did was it opened the eyes that good people in baseball can come from anywhere. Mm. Like you don't just have to have a scouting background right. or a playing background or a player development background. Like I work with some of the most brightest people in the world and they'll tell me, they're like, I played like a year of little league, but I love baseball. <laughs> right. you know? yeah. And so what they did was they went to school and they studied, you know, business or economics or, you know, sports, you know, sports administration, all those different things. And so that's kind of the avenue that they took. And so then once they got into baseball, they said, okay, well now what's the next piece that I need? I know the statistical part of things. 
I know the administrative part of things. So now I'm going to hang around the scouts for a little bit and learn that side of it and learn how they operate and what they're trying to see. And we do the same thing from a scouting side. Like I didn't come up with an analytical background. Like I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was, I was a player. And so I love to be in the draft room or in our offices and talking to those guys and saying like, what do you, what are you seeing? Like, what are the numbers showing you? Like, why, why does this player differentiate from that player? So I think just accepting kind of where, where you're at and going, okay, this is what I need to do to take those next steps going forward. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really important for people to kind of decide like, Hey, I, I want to do this part of baseball. Like, yeah. I, you know, because just saying, Oh, I want to work in baseball. Well, yeah, that, that's great. And that's awesome. Yeah. But there's just, there's so many different things that you can do. And we see it from, you know, we have, it's called the MLB winter meetings every year and there's, you know, job opportunities everywhere. And it's like, you can do anything, but there's like, there's baseball, baseball operations, internships, there's concessions, internships, there's ticketing internships, there's, you know, game day internships, there's, you know, all different types of avenues. So I think really doing your research of like where your heart is and then going from there. So, and you kind of just alluded to there, and I want to go back to this, uh, what you called some conference, but early uh, in this interview, you talked about, and this is true, I think, for every industry. It's who you know, like right. to get some of the good jobs, who you know. What are some ways that people who don't have a neighbor who works in baseball, uh, to, they can get to know people in, in baseball. And, and you already mentioned something like, uh, you know, like I know in some industries, I'll say, well, there's conferences, there's, you know, things, yeah. or you internships. What are, what are some other... Yeah, I think the biggest networking opportunity that goes on in, in baseball is the MLB winter meetings. That's usually okay. the big. The Tell meeting. me about that because I'd never heard of it until so, you just said it. So <laughs> you you get all of you get all the thirty teams are together basically from top to bottom of the people that lead the departments for everything that they do mm-hmm. from like I said from ticketing to baseball operations and they're all in one place at one time. And it's, it's almost like there's, there's a trade show, there's, uh, you know, job seeking opportunities, there's networking opportunities because you get to see people in the lobby and talk to them and, and general public, can yeah, come. general public wow. come. Okay. And, um, and so what a lot of people will do when they want to, if they don't have a lot of connections is get on the email and say, Hey, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. I'm going to be at the MLB winter meetings would love to, you know, grab you for one to two minutes and pick your brain about how you got into the game and what I can do and things like that. And so you see it all the time when you go to those winter meetings, it's like you see a, a kid, you know, sitting down with, you know, somebody, you know, and it's like, Oh, okay. Probably yeah. reached out to him and, and we're all trying to help each other grow because we want the industry to grow. And so for sure, like people are usually going to respond to those and uh, it's a good opportunity to network. Um, you know, the other thing that, you know, I did personally and, now, now you can email, but when, when I was in college, it was, I wrote personal letters hmm. to every scouting director, every GM, every assistant GM, and just said, Hey, I would love to, if I can get five to 10 minutes of your time and just ask questions or, or meet with you or talk on the phone, whatever it is. And then you build relationships like that. You build, yeah. you know, you build a, a connection. And so then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, Hey, I, I, you know, they'll say, well, make sure you graduate and make sure you do this. And so then it's like, all right, you go back to them in a year and say, you know, Mr. Such and such or Mrs. Such and such. I did this. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I remember that kid's a good work, you know, yeah. and then they yeah. end up getting hired as an intern. And then all of a sudden, two years later, they're doing this and that, and you just, you see it blossom. So yeah. it's not like any other, you know, it, you know what I mean? Where this, yeah, yeah it's very, it's very, I mean, like I said, that's, that's yeah. kind of how you do it in most business. Yeah. Right? And especially in, um, you know, the businesses where there's not like the, you know, it's not like being a doctor or a dentist where it's right. like, you got to have this amount of schooling or right. this amount, like, no, like, like I said, there's people that don't have any schooling. There's people that have Harvard, Yale backgrounds and you and they all work together, yeah. you know, and it's, yeah. so it's just uh, a lot of it is who, you know, but you know, when, when I say a lot of it's who, you know, it's, it does also how work, how hard you work to get to know them too. Nice. So, like working for some organizations, there's perks that you come with. Like everybody knows if you work for an airline, you get, you know, travel. So are there perks working for, you know, a baseball organization like that maybe people aren't aware of? They're like, well, what's like, why should I go work for a 
professional baseball organization versus just a regular business? Like, are there some, some right. fun perks that some might interest someone? Right. Well, and I, and I think that's, I think that's probably the, one of the coolest parts about working in sports is that what you do is, is what a lot of jobs are their perks, you know, you, you know, <laughs> that's a good point. you know, or it's like, that's a great, point. like, <laughs> I, I mean, I can get you pirate tickets or, you know, or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but you know, we get to travel a lot. We get to, you know, obviously you collect your hotel points and your travel right. points and, and all those different things. And obviously, you know, when you talk about, you know, medical insurance and health and all the, all those different things come into play, but just from a, like a pure, pure perk standpoint, like, man, you get to be around the game that you love. You get to be watching the game you love. You can go to spring yeah. training. You can go to a major league game. You can, you know, go to a minor league. You can all those different things. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's very different. And that's why you the know, job itself is kind of a perk. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, the, the hardest part is the traveling is, yeah. is getting there, but I mean, I've been working for 13 years and I, I don't really ever feel like I've like gone to work. You yeah, know, that's like, awesome. I, you know what I mean? Like when, when you have a, a flight delay, that's the only time it kind of feels like, <laughs> oh man, like, uh, you know, but when you're at the game and you're, you're watching these kids and you're trying to help these kids and make their dreams come true, like that's a perk in itself. So. Yeah. That's a great point. I love the way you put that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, most people that they like, they'll come to our games and they're like, oh, we work for you know, this company and this is our, you know, we, we earned this after 50 days. So it's like, <laughs> You're like, this is my daily life. <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah. I, I love that. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why someone might want to work in baseball because they want it to feel like that. Right. So kind of a related question. Obviously you have a lot of interaction with players because that your job demands it. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's say you work in, you know, a pretty important like a statistical role or something like that. Maybe something, you know, more back office, front office. I don't know how much, uh, like if somebody's saying, well, I want to be around the, 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 the MLB players, you yeah. know, uh, how, how much, in it, and obviously beyond the obvious roles, like in scouting or coaching or, mm -hmm. you know, people who daily work with them, how much interaction is, does the, an organization, people in the organization have that? And I'm going to give you a little context. I, years ago, I, I was working, I went to Microsoft for my, my job mm -hmm. and I met with, I'd met Bill Gates a couple of times on different occasions, not at Microsoft, but I met him at trade shows and I'd met Steve Ballmer, who was the president. I met, I went to his office and I'm talking to Microsoft employees. Like I've never even seen either one of them in real life. And I'm like, why did that shock me? You know what I mean? Like, so what is that dynamic like um, for people who aren't directly involved with players? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's probably like anything, like you, you earn your dues a little bit and, and you know, and, and eventually you get to right. that point, you know, where yeah. you start out doing the internship work where it's, you know, whatever that internship is, but then all of a sudden you look up and 10 to 15 years later, it's like, man, that, that kid that was an internship in our analytics department. Now he's got an office down at the major league clubhouse and he's got all these players coming in and out going like, Hey, like, can I look at this or can I look at uh, that? And, you know, so, so a lot of that is just earning your keep. Earning your keep. And, yeah. And, and, dues, get, yeah. and getting to that point. Yeah. Um, it's hard to, to tell any, you know, person to be like, well, if you do this, then you're going to work with right. the age leagues. You know what I mean? Like even myself, like I don't, I'm not, overly involved with our, our major league team. A lot sure, of my work is you're doing it. You're yeah. trying to get people to the yeah, team. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a, a thing where <laughs> there's not, there's not a lot of, lot of people that are like day in and day out working with right. the major league team. That's it's a very small Other than the coaching yeah, staff. And yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But we definitely have support staff. I mean, we yeah. have medical staff, we have, you know, analytics department, we have all these different types of people that are working with them, but Usually it's, or it's unusual to go up to that person and say like, Hey, how'd you get this job? And they say, well, I, I got hired yesterday. And they're like, no, they're like, man, I remember I slept on the couch for five years and that internship. And finally I got my opportunity to go to double A and yeah. then, you know, the double A coach really liked me. And then when he went to the big leagues, he said, Hey, we need to hire this kid. Uh, and, you know, you know, so it's, it's a lot of just, like I said, earning your keep and getting to that point. So I'm going to try and wrap it up here pretty soon because I could talk to you for days. And I'm sure there are baseball fans who stumbled across this video or are like, yeah, let's keep talking. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when you're talking about, we've, we focus primarily on Major League Baseball because that's where you work. 
when you're working for the company and obviously the players, I think most people understand how that works, but mm -hmm. from an employee perspective, cause you just mentioned, you know, somebody was working in the minor leagues as a physical therapist right, or something. Right. Um, who are you working for? Are they, are they, is that all part of like the pirates organization it covers that whole thing? So yeah. you're an employee for the pirates, even if you're only focused in triple a or double a yeah. or something. Yeah. So, I guess the way you could look at it is we all we all work for the Pittsburgh Pirates, okay. but then it's kind of broken up into sections where, you know, there's the amateur scouting, there's international scouting, there's professional scouting, there, and then what, there's what's called player development. Uh -huh. And so player development are the people that work hand in hand with our minor league players. And so under that player development umbrella, you're going to have all your major league or excuse me, your minor league coaches your minor league coordinators, your infield coordinator, your pitching coordinator, all your support staff. And so, yes, we all work for Pirates, but those are the people that are like really directly working with the players. Gotcha. And so with so with Pittsburgh, we have two teams in the Dominican. We have um, a, a Gulf Coast League team. We have a low A team, a high A team, a double A team, and a triple A team. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of steps wow. that happen prior to getting to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, all of those steps are equally important for our players to, to get the nutrition they need, the strength mm. and conditioning they need, you know, and then all obviously the baseball development that they need. Um, but yeah, again, like we all work under the Pittsburgh Pirates umbrella, but that's kind of their domain is player development. So it seems like in each of those, there's going to be, a, obviously there's a support staff, organization, employees mm -hmm. that, that support each of those different categories. Um, so for someone kind of going back to saying, trying to work in baseball and they're going to reach out to someone is it better for them to kind of do the homework and say, you know what, maybe I'll just start out, you know, see what I can do in the minors or, you know, and maybe I can get a, a job working. I, I like, ha, I would imagine that at the, at the major level, at the top, that's where you have the most staff, right? You have a lot of, you know, people in analytics, for example, mm -hmm. and you got a, a ton of people and maybe in the minors, maybe there's one person or nobody. I don't know. <laughs> no, there's no, there's, there's tons there. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. There's, there's tons at every level and, and every, every stop, is almost like the major league team in itself where it's like you've got you got a full coaching staff you got a medical staff you've got concessions you've got ticketing you've got you know marketing all all those different things at every level at every single wow. level um so would you say it's maybe easier to break in at that level as opposed to going straight for the yeah yeah okay. and, and that's generally what most people do is okay. they usually break in at the at the minor league level and they kind of work their way up but again, it goes back to like what we've talked about before. There's there's not a lot of rhyme and reason to a lot of things in baseball, you know, because, you know, all of a sudden you see some kid that, you know, he goes to this university and he gets an internship with the major league team and then he does a great job. And then all of a sudden that person's like, man, we need somebody here. It's like, Boom. okay, well, he didn't take that path, yeah. but somebody else might have been working at the low A team for 16 years and they never got that opportunity. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, there's not there's not one way, but it's a what it does is it gives people more opportunities more opportunity. to work yeah. in the game, and it yeah. gives your it gives you an opportunity to show yourself and yeah. say, hey, like I can do this. Um, the difference between you know player development and like the scouting and all that side of it is most of the player development people are going to be ex player like the coaching staff, right? Ex player, you Makes know, sense. Yeah, yeah, the people that are trained. I mean, there there's some teams that you know they'll they'll differentiate a little bit, but for the most part, you're going to get ex players, ex coaches and because, you know, they're developing them baseball wise. And I'm kind of tying that back to your conversation before, you know, being a parent yourself and giving advice to kids coming up, you know, I, I think there's the player side of it, but you know, as a parent, you know, you always tell your kids, well, Hey, pursue this dream. Make sure you, you know, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. You know, maybe if you don't make it to, you know, the major leagues or whatever. Maybe you don't get even the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're getting a degree if you want to work in baseball that you can you do that sort of thing. And and I think it's just a good reminder, remind people. Number one, major league baseball feels, I don't know if it is, but it feels like one of the largest professional sporting organizations. Yeah. Maybe maybe there are bigger ones, but when I look at you know the NBA and 
even hockey. Hockey's similar, but I, I still feel like Major League Baseball probably has the biggest oh, organization yeah. overall. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of opportunity in baseball, I, yeah. I, I think, uh, in that regard. So, like, what, how, what do you see for yourself in the future? Like, do you, what are your goals? What do you, or do you just love what you're doing? Do you want to stay in scouting, or do you want to do you want to be like a team owner one day? You know. Well, I I think for for people that have kind of gone down my path of scouting and working in baseball operations, I mean, ultimately you just want to be part of an organization. You're supposed and, to say team owner. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't think I'll ever be a team owner. That means you have a lot of money yeah, and, uh, and we're friends. If, so if, if I become a team owner, something there. went really <laughs> weird. Um, but no, I, I think most of the people that get into working in baseball operations, they hope to, you know, eventually work in a front office or, you know, be a general manager or, oh, okay. you know, a scouting director or a player development director, you know? And so I don't know. And this kind of goes, goes back to kind of the advice my dad gave me was like, be the best at what you're doing right now and everything else will take care of itself. So if, if I'm, if I'm the best special assignment scout I can be, well then, you know what, maybe the, I hope the pirates or maybe it's another organization says, Hey, you know, we should put him in this spot because he'd be great. You know what I mean? Yeah. But instead of like being in my job and being like, well, I got to have this job or that job or, you know, let, you know, like, no, like be the best at what you're doing. And if you do that, then good things are going to go from it. But ultimately such good advice. Yeah. You know, ultimately I just, I love being part of an organization and it's fun that, you know, when I, when opening day starts and for the next 162 games, man, I, I, you feel like you're part of it. And it's like, man, if we win the world series, I'll, I'll get a world series ring, you know, <laughs> no. and, you know, and that so, was the other question I was going to ask you who gets a world series ring. So I, I don't know the exact answer on that. I know, I know all of baseball operations want, I know, um, the leaders of most departments will get them. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know. That would be a probably a c- question for people that work. <laughs> other, but I know like just from, from in scouting and player development, like all of the, all of those people get. Wow. World series. So if the pirates win, when, I should say when the pirates win, don't, don't <laughs> there hate. you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. So my dad, his first year of scouting was 1983. Okay. With the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, wow. And they won the world series that year. So he got a ring first year. Got a ring. And then never won another one after that. So he got a ring though. Yeah. Yeah. And so like <laughs> our whole lives, like he would wear this Baltimore <laughs> Orioles saying, and we're like, man, I, I gotta have, you know what I mean? So cool. And so like Bobby hasn't got one. I haven't got yeah. one. And you know, and, and what's weird is by default, probably Brian's going to get it because he's the oldest, you know, <laughs> you know, so that, so yeah. So, so when my dad passes, Brian's probably going to be walking around with an oil series. For yeah. You got to earn your, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the little brother. So I got a ways to go. Yeah. But you still got to, yeah. I mean, you're still young, you yeah, know, so you got, uh, yeah. And you know, the pirates could win. I hope so. You know, I hope if so. you do your job. Well, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> well, it's been super fun to have you on. It's no. always fun having a friend on and uh, appreciate you taking the time to come, come talk about us. And uh, you know, when, when the pirates are winning, I'm going to have you back on. All right. I love it. All right. Sounds good. Talk to you then. Thanks, Dave.